Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about something called Synastry, chart comparison where you can really see how someone relates to another person and if they are compatible. One of the things that I like to talk about with Synastry is relating each planet to planet. So what you're actually doing is you're overlaying one chart over the other and you see where one person's planets fall in the other person's chart and that is how they're going to relate. But as I said, planet to planet is really the most crucial indicator that can represent harmony, compatibility, will the relation last, will the relationship endure difficult times. Sometimes you can see it, but many times it is up to the person. I know so many people feel like there's only one person out there in the world for them. And it's not always the case because there's a lot that we're here to experience through other people. Now, one of the most defining uh, features of a chart can be Rahu and Ketu. They are our destiny. They are our connection from the past, from previous lifetimes to this lifetime. I mean, they are really our karmas. So when somebody has K2 conjunct another person's planet, then you know they've been together before. That's why when you meet, it's like you've known this person forever. But it also means there's things to be worked out because we have karma with other people. That's why we're brought together. That's why we're attracted and drawn together. There's nothing more powerful than the nodes of the moon. Rahu being on a planet, that will cause someone to have this ultimate burning desire or this desire of attraction like an addiction when rahus conjunct someone else's when your rahu is on any of their planets it's like you're addicted to each other you have to be together obsessed or vice versa their rahu is on any of your planets but when you have k2 it's like there's this remembrance of something from the past that you have to be with someone. And you know that the, the nodes mean you have something to work out for good or bad. Now, just looking at the planets, you know that Venus is love and relationships and Mars is passion. So when people have a connection between Mars and Venus, they're automatically attracted to each other. They can't help it. So if your Mars sits on someone else's Venus or their Venus sits on your Mars, you'll be attracted. But here's something else to really look for and consider oppositions in a chart because opposites attract. Remember, that's just the law of physics. Opposites attract. It's magnetic. It's magnetism. So I find when you find oppositions in a chart to be the key factor of a strong, strong attraction. And yes, they do last because when someone's opposite of you, then that means that they are they, they're completely different. They feel a void or emptiness that you have. And likewise, you do the same for them. I mean, consider this when you think about male and female, males and females, they're completely opposite. Why do we end up being attracted to each other and spend a lifetime together? Because we're just so opposite and opposites attract and it works. So that's the power of opposites. Have you ever noticed that the people that you're most attracted to are born the opposite time of year as you? Now this doesn't even matter if you're doing tropical sidereal astrology or Western, I mean Western tropical, or if you're doing sidereal Vedic astrology, because regardless, you're born at the opposite time of year. You're completely opposite. And that works. I mean, I've noticed my whole life that 
People born the opposite time of year are like my best friends and my husband. I mean, I'm born in November and he's born in May. And some of my best friends throughout life were always born in May. That throws a lot of planets in the opposite signs than where mine are. And that's the attraction. So I wanted to look at some charts and show you how this works because I'm just talking and you can't really, when you visually see something, this is where it's going to start really making sense. But the thing that, a couple of things that I always look for in Sinistry or chart comparison compatibility is where's the sun and the moon? These are the lights of the charts and you're going to want to find out if they are connected, particularly the sun and the moon. If your moon is the other person's sun, that is the strongest. Why? Because the sun illuminates the moon and the moon reflects that light energy back. There's that reflection and attraction. So if your moon is in Gemini and the other person's sun is in Sagittarius, then that's an opposition. But also, if your sun is in Gemini and the other person's sun, moon is in Gemini, there you have that reflection again. I'll warn you though, the person that it's the sun sign versus the moon sign is the one that usually will be the leader in call the shots. In other words, be the one who wears the pants in the family. So once again, it's when the sun and the moon are either where one person's sun is the other person's moon, or if they're opposed one another, one person's sun is opposed the other person's moon. So you'll see that this works. So a chart of two famous people I find very interesting that they've stayed together for over 30 years, maybe 35 years about, is Goldie Hawn and Kirk Russell. So when we look at their charts, you'll see that they've stayed together. But, but what's amazing about them, they never got married, but they, they've stayed together. They're in love. So let's put up the charts of Goldie Hawn and Kirk Russell and see what we can see from these charts. And one of the reasons why I wanted to use these charts is because they're still together. The charts where the people fall apart, which is more commonly seen, I didn't want to show. So looking at this, Goldie Hawn, looking at her ascendant, it is in Sagittarius, and looking at Kirk Russell, he's got his ascendant in what? The opposing sign, Gemini. So opposites attract. Yes, it goes that way with the ascendant as well. So opposing signs attract. So like I said, sometimes you should look from planet to planet first, such as Let's take both of their Venuses. Where are their Venuses? So in Kirk Russell's chart, his Venus is in Aries. Where do we have Goldie's Air Venus? And Libra. These are opposing signs. And if you can look in this chart, you can see that these are the opposing blocks from each other in this square South Indian style chart. So their Venuses are opposed. Venus is love and romance. Very important variable. Always will be an important variable in attraction. Now, of course, people can have planets conjunct as well. But like I said, look first for those oppositions and look planet to planet, Venus to Venus in opposition. Venus rules love. And so when you look at other planets, such as their moon sign, if you'll look in Goldie Hawn's chart, her moon is in Gemini. And guess what? So is Kurt, Kirk's moon 
in Gemini as well. They think a lot alike. The moon is the mind. So you can see that's connected. So I'm sure they are always in conversation too, if it's in Gemini, the, the sign of communications. I mean, they must share a lot of their ideas. And that's, you know, a, a definitely a feature that will keep people together. Some other planets that I look for, where is Jupiter? Is Jupiter aspecting their planets, each other's planets? And when I go to Goldie's chart, she has Jupiter in Virgo going to Kirk's chart. He has Mars, Mercury, and Sun in Pisces, which means that her Jupiter opposes his Mars, Mercury and Sun. I mean, Jupiter is optimism, happiness, fun, expansion, opportunities. So Goldie gives this to Kirk because her Sun activates those three planets in, Ver in, in, in Pisces, which are Mars, Mercury, Sun, from her Jupiter in Virgo. Now also notice that her Jupiter sits on his Saturn. And what does that tell you? Believe it or not, you need Saturn contacts for a relationship to last. Saturn goes for the duration, Saturn makes things last. So always look for some connection with Saturn and you'll see that this will make a relationship go for a longer duration. So really, if you want to look at Kirk's Jupiter, which is conjunct Rahu in Aquarius, it actually casts a trine to her moon and his own moon. So you want to look at, you know, the trines that the plant that Jupiter may make. Is it aspecting planets from the other person's chart? And in this case, yes. His Jupiter, which sits in Aquarius, actually trines Goldie's moon Rahu, as well as her Venus in Libra. So that is a beautiful connection. And furthermore, you can take it down to these planets. What house do they fall in for each other? Because when I look at Goldie's Jupiter in her 10th house, it actually aspects Kurt's planets in his 10th house. So it actually, her Jupiter resides in his fourth house, which is home and family. And that's what they claim, their claim to fame is what they say, family's everything. They brought together kids from other marriages and it all works, but it's because they put family first. And that may be because Goldie's Jupiter is in Virgo, but sits in Kirk's fourth house of family, but it aspects all of his 10th house planets. Yes, they've done movies together. I think they met on a set. So it's about 10th house variables that she gave him opportunities and they're connected through home and work. So you can see how these planets really hook up and essentially, Goldie's Rahu, which is conjunct her moon, and Gemini, actually, her Rahu sits on Kirk's natal moon. So there was things for them to come together and work out in this lifetime. So you see how they're connected with the nodal axes, the nodes. So looking at Mars, Mars is that attractive value. And the fact that Goldie's Jupiter aspects Kirk's Mars is passion, is truly passion. So one last thing, when you look to the Saturn Mars that is in Goldie's chart in Cancer, you'll find that it goes to Kirk's second house, which is what? the house of finances and money. So you'll see that they're tied together in many respects because this Mars Saturn lands in his second house. 
she probably spends a lot of money too, <laughs> according to him. But you can see how when you just plant these planets from one chart to the other, but focus in on conjunctions and oppositions and the trinal aspect of Jupiter, you can see so much, so much of how a person relates to another. And don't forget, always look at Rahu and Ketu's aspect for the destiny, the purpose that they've come together. And Saturn makes relationships last. So I think you might have gotten some good information on how to really analyze synastry charts comparing two birth charts together in this lesson. But remember, if you are wanting to learn Vedic astrology, take this to the next level. I have an online university where we do take this deeper. And that university is University of Vedic Astrology Com. Now, if you would like to learn more about me or get a compatibility reading, then you can always go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. Thank you.